would be most useful for you in this conversation? How could I best help you? Yeah, so I wrote down some points. <laughs> I know we have 15 minutes, but okay. So um, I was analyzing my past like, practice um, exams and even my, well, I think one of them were just, one of them was disclosed. One of my else's was disclosed. And a lot of my problems stem from reading comprehension and logic games, specifically like combination games and grouping games. That's what Blueprint calls it. I shouldn't have mentioned your name, but that's, no, that's what fine, they called it. <laughs> um, so, I, I mean, I guess I would like some tips on how to approach reading comprehension especially. I, I feel like whenever I read the passages during test day, I'm like zoning out. And I have to like literally shake my head and focus. And um, let me see, another question um, I have is like, so conditional reasoning, like conditional logic, whatever, whatever, like, will that be present throughout the exam? I feel like when I took the July and September exam, maybe because I wasn't looking for it, I didn't really see it. I mean, I feel like that's obviously the framework I need to have to approach these problems throughout the LSAT period. But I, I don't know. I answered my own question. But I just feel like I don't know how to, I guess, spot it sometimes. I don't know. I feel like I'm such a um, what's, what's the word? A rookie when it comes to the LSAT. And I've been studying over a year for the LSAT still. I still can't get it right. Yeah, the LSAT requires a lot of us. And it, it's really good at making smart people feel stupid. You know, I still feel like a beginner sometimes with regard to certain specific things. It's a journey yeah. that, ne that is never really over. Whenever I discover something new about it, I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, I had no idea. How could I have been at it for so long and not seen it in this particular way? Right. So let's, I heard two big things I want to pull out that we could just use as jumping off points right now. Okay. One of them is approaching reading comprehension and the other is the conditionality, conditional statement. So for reading comp, right. let's start there. How are you currently going about it and what's your note taking like with regard to that section? So I try to, and I think this is where I messed up with reading comprehension. Each paragraph I read, I try to pull key elements out, but I feel like whatever I deem as like key, like it, when, it, when I get to the questions, I don't see, you know, what I pulled out, what I kind of um, paraphrased about that paragraph itself. So I take each um, paragraph and I paraphrase it. So that's how I approach reading comprehension at the moment. How long is it taking you to take these notes? <laughs> <laughs> It takes me a very, 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 it takes me a long time. On, on test day, I found myself losing track of time. Like every section, losing track of time. So it, it takes me a very, very long time to take notes. Because sometimes, let's say if I get to a question that didn't address what I pulled out, I'm like, let me read it again. I have to read that paragraph again. So I always have to back check. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay, that's good. To, that's good to be aware of. So the first thing we is we have to figure out how long is it actually taking you? And could we get that down to a manageable benchmark? Like, let's say, maybe you're spending 15 minutes just taking notes on one passage. Maybe we don't know, because we're not tracking the time, right? So give it a shot once and see okay. what that's like. Then like see, yeah, so 15 minutes taking notes on LSAT reading comp for one passage. That's obviously not workable on test day because you have eight minutes, 45 sec seconds to do an entire passage and questions. But could we go from 15 minutes on note-taking to 10, to seven, to five, to three? And then if you were down to three minutes, then you've got enough time to actually do the questions too. But I guess my question is like, how can I, like, before I studied for the LSAT, I, I used to skim through passages. If, you know, if I was in class, obviously I have to read the context, but usually I just skim. I skim through articles where I just pull out important facts. I feel like, how can I get, how can I read a passage of like, like that's practically a page and a half. Technically, it's like 450 words, like I think. Um, each, um, uh, what is each it? Each passage, each, yeah. Each passage. <laughs> Sorry about that, Steve. Um, how can I limit that? How can I limit that? It's like three minutes of passage. How can I do that? 
well, with time. It doesn't happen overnight. What I'm suggesting is as an exercise, you gradually reduce the amount of time you're giving yourself to take these notes. So first to start off, give yourself all the time in the world. Then cut that down a little bit. Maybe you cut it down 10% or 20% and you see, can you compress your note taking? Maybe you okay. work faster and maybe there's also some things that didn't really even need to be in your notes. What if you could reduce your time allotted on the note taking to a point where it was down to five minutes or less, ideally three minutes or less, and your accuracy didn't really drop? How cool would that be? It's possible. It just takes time. Okay. And um, another question I have for you. So there's 10 weeks until June 8th, the, you know, about that. Like how many hours a day should I be studying? Currently I'm studying four hours a day with one day's rest. So is that sufficient? Like, you know, how should I proceed? It's really about study? whatever you can reasonably do, what you can get out of it without burning out. So four hours is a perfectly reasonable amount of time. Just ask yourself, are you burning out? Are you staying fresh? Are you taking breaks? And are you making forward progress? That's ultimately the most important thing. Okay. I've seen your like, um, stay at home, like outside study schedule like that. So I was like, you know, I, like, I looked at the times and I, it totaled about four hours or so with breaks. When I usually study, I don't have a break. So maybe I should incorporate, incorporate like breaks in between my, you know, the time I have. Maybe that will help me stay fresh. Exactly. Yeah. I think you'll get yeah. more out of it if you do take some breaks. Four hours in one stretch is a lot of time, especially if everyone's stuck at home these days and like you can really start to get that cabin <laughs> fever, you know? Yes. You're in New York, right? Yeah, I am. Yeah. So we have to stay home. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a scary thing. So, okay, definitely. I'll definitely listen to that. And, um, let me see. One of my last questions, right? When it comes to logic games, I sign myself. I can, I read, I will read the rules. I can, I understand the rules. I diagram it correctly. When it gets to the questions, I feel like I don't apply like what they're asking, like correctly. Like I should, I have an example. Um, it's a tiered ordering game um, in June, 2013. It was a question. So I know you have to like kind of find something that will replace that rule that will give you the same effect. But I, I, for some reason, I still couldn't like connect it and just diagram it. I, I don't know. It was just really confusing. So. Yeah, so it sounds like you're asking about rule substitution or rule equivalency questions. They're asking which one of the following, if substituted for yeah. the original rule, would have an identical effect changing nothing at all. Yes. These, are, these seem tough. And they were only introduced fairly recently, starting with exam number 57, which is from June 2009. Okay. So they started back then. They've appeared on never, nearly every exam since then. And because they appear so infrequently, only once per exam, and they weren't even prior to 57, people feel like they're strange and different. In reality, they're not that different. They're just unfamiliar because they're rare. So what I would suggest for you once again as an exercise is to do several of these in a row. So exams 57 through 66, let's say. Do the 10 logic games containing those specific questions. For each game, do the setup for the game, diagram the rules, make your inferences, and then do only that single question associated. So you're doing these by type. You're not doing the other questions in the game. You're not doing the others in the sections. What you're doing is you're just allowing yourself to see the common patterns associated with solving this question type. Okay. And I mean, with you and the LSAT, right? I know that you did a lot of practice, practice tests. Um, like, how come you didn't burn out after all of that time? Like, you just, did, was it consistent or was it, did you take breaks like, you know, one year and then next year? And then, well, you went to law school, right? If you mind me asking. No, I actually didn't go to law school. What? I got so sidetracked with the LSAT. I got obsessed with it. Oh my gosh. Crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. So like, okay. So how did, I, I don't know, like, how did you become obsessed? Like, I, I don't know, like this test to me, it gives me a huge headache. And I need, again, 
I need to have a different approach. I need to treat it like it's fun and treat it like it's a puzzle. It is a puzzle that I need to figure out, but I, I guess like how to kind of get over that, that's the question. Yeah, I think you've got to become genuinely interested in what goes into making this exam and why is it an exam used for law school admissions? I know it's easy to say this is dumb. It doesn't test anything. What do logic games have to do with anything at all? But if you could imagine that there was actually a reason why each of these sections and each of these question types is on the LSAT, how does it connect to what you do in law school? How does it connect to legal thinking? And also, who are the people who make this? I actually befriended one of these people who used to write actual LSAT questions. I've done a few discussions with him on the YouTube channel and podcast. I've also done a book of written interviews with him as well. And it's really interesting to, to get inside their mindset in terms of how they're laying those traps for everybody. You know, it's really clever of them the way they go about it. And I actually ended up writing my own logic games just as an exercise and seeing what kind of traps could I lay for students. If you can lay the traps and you know what the traps are, you're much less likely to fall for them, right? right. So that's the kind of approach I got, kind of got into with this exam pretty quickly. Okay. All right. That's definitely good to know. And that's the approach I'll take on from now until June. <laughs> okay. So I, I know our 15 minutes are up, but I wanted to say thank you so much. Before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? I mean, having a positive attitude about the LSAT, you seem really interested. You are obviously interested in the LSAT and helping students like me. Um, and I guess another one is just when it comes down to isolating certain types of questions, well, yeah, questions that I have issues with, whether it be an LR or logic games. What, what was that? I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> isolating those questions, focusing on those question types and improving that way as opposed to just kind of revisiting when I'm like taking you know I go let's say I take one LR section I take that I'm not really focusing on my weak point I'm you know I'm addressing not addressing I'm taking let's say I take um the September LSAT section two let's say it's LR I'm being presented with different types of questions rather than isolating that the rule equivalency question, you know what I mean? And so that's what I'll take on from this, like just focusing on doing that instead of just forgetting about it. And I'll attack it later on. So that's what I'll do. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you have a plan. I'll try to have this plan. I'll try to implement the plan. Awesome. Well, again, it was great connecting with you. Keep in touch. Let me know if you need anything at all as you move forward. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.